So mineral feeding, I, at least in my opinion, in, in Canada, in Canadian beef production, uh, is a necessity. Uh, we, we really have to look at what type of mineral to feed, when to feed it, and how much to feed. That's, those are the real questions. It's not whether we should be feeding it, but what type of program are we going to be utilizing these minerals under. The Beef Research School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Beef Cattle Research Council. Mineral deficiencies don't develop overnight, but uh, particularly over time with trace mineral deficiencies, what we see is you know, general poor performance. We can see reproductive issues. We can see lameness issues. There's just a host of symptoms that, that we can come across that depending upon the, the mineral that, that is at issue, uh, you're gonna see economic consequences in the herd. When I talk with beef producers about their mineral program, there's, there's some real important questions that, that you have to consider, both as the producer and, and as well as you know, a, a nutritionist who's providing that information. And Number one, you really want to know a little bit about the, the locale of where the operation is. You want to know the soil types. Uh, for example, you can look at uh, uh, black soil zones, you can look at dark brown soil zones, you can look at gray wooded soil zones. And if, if your producer's in those areas, you know, there, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to have a selenium deficiency in those soils. Uh, you could also have issues with copper deficiencies because the soil's deficient, okay? So we want to know where the producer lives. We want to know, uh, ideally, a soil test uh, on the producer's um, uh, land base so that we know whether there's issues, for example, with high molybdenum levels. Uh, we want to know what the, the uh, analysis of the producer's water is because there can be high levels of sulfur in that water that can interfere uh, with uh, other minerals such as copper. Uh, we want to have a, a, a feed test on the forage base of that operation so that we get a feel for uh, not only the major minerals but what are the levels of the uh, 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 micro minerals as well. So when you start uh, trying to answer that question, you, you really want to know what part of the country is, the, is that producer living in? What's, what's the soil conditions, the soil chemistry? You want to know the water chemistry. You also want to know the chemistry of the forages that he's feeding. In my opinion, there's, there's, there's no question that it's worth it. Uh, and that's a question that we, we often get from producers. And, you know, they see the price tag on a mineral. They might see a 11 or 12 or $1,300 a ton and maybe 8 to 10 or 11 cents a day going, going to these cows in a mineral program. And they, they ask you, you know, can you justify that cost? And I guess the best answer to that is, you know, if you're used to somewhere around a 95% conception rate in your cows, and you start uh, taking away the mineral program, and all of a sudden over a year or two that goes from 95% down to 85%, or your bred heifers all of a sudden they show up 50% of them open. Uh, it doesn't take long to justify uh, that mineral program. Uh, so definitely it is worth it if you want to look at the overall productivity of the operation. Okay, there's, uh, there's a host of supplementation strategies that are out there. Um, the, the, there's, there's no doubt that if, uh, if we can provide that mineral uh, either in a total mix ration, whether we can mix it in with some barley, if we're supplementing barley to the animals, uh, whether we're supplementing uh, something like a fortified grain screening pellet where the mineral is already included in there. Uh, we know that that's the best way to get that mineral into those animals because they're going to consume it and they're going to consume it on a regular basis and they're not going to over consume it. 
Okay. Uh, but that's not always the case, particularly in cow-calf operations, that, that we can do that. So we really have to look at uh, some alternative methods uh, and the, the typical alternative out there is going to be uh, a free choice mineral supplementation program. And again, that's, it's just not simply a matter of turning the cows out and giving them access to a free choice mineral. There's a lot of questions, there's a lot of uh, management that has to surround the mineral feeder in order to ensure proper consumption of, the, of, of that mineral. And we can get into situations where mineral is overconsumed. we can get into situations where it's under-consumed. And a lot of the times that relates to management of the mineral feeder, okay? So one of the questions I often get is, um, we haven't had our cows on mineral for a while. We've turned them on to a mineral and, and it's like candy to them. They, they just won't stop eating. You know? What do I do, right? Well, maybe there's a good reason it tastes like candy if they haven't had it for six months or, or over the past year, right? They, they, they need that mineral, they're going after it. Give them a time period to adapt uh, before you start pull, pulling the mineral. Let, let them come to kind of an equilibrium over maybe a three or four week period uh, and then start to assess whether they're still overeating that mineral. Uh, if they are, then regulate how much you put out. Put out a, a seven to, to 14 day supply uh, at one time and don't come back for, for that two week period or one week period. Regulate the amount that you're giving them and control their intake in that fashion. Uh, under consumption, you can get into issues with uh, uh, weathering of the mineral, you can get into issues with palatability of the mineral. Uh, perhaps there's too much salt. Maybe there's other salt sources that the cattle are going to. Uh, again, there's a lot of issues where that mineral uh, feeder is located, how often you're filling it, uh, wind, rain, etc. Uh, all of those factors can influence mineral intake uh, and the success of a free choice mineral feeding program. So, Management of a mineral feeder is, a, is an important part of a, of a mineral program.